Coming up, scientific or affirmative prayer. Welcome to the Fourfold Path and Dr. Michael Leike's spiritual tools and technologies that will increase the quality of your life. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Reverend Dr. Michael Leike. This is the Fourfold Path, Episode 5, Affirmative Prayer or Scientific Prayer. We'll be back. Now in its 10th season, listen and watch Fridays to Dr. Michael's podcast and webcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, MixCloud, Spreaker, Blog Talk Radio, YouTube, and Facebook. And we're back. I'm going to talk this um, this episode uh, in some detail about scientific or affirmative prayer. It's my personal favorite. Um, I'll give you a little bit of background. Again, refer to my book, one of my books, The Fourfold Path, or The Science of the Soul, or Spiritual Mind Science. There's over 40 of them, but um, those main ones, including my most recent one, is the most concise one, and it gets right down to it. And then if you want to enhance your experience or or learn more you can google it you can take courses from me or other new thought institutions so generally speaking in the mid to late 1800s uh, a fellow named phineas parker's quimby was doing healings on the east coast of the united states around the boston area and he was a clockmaker by trade but people came to him because he prayed over them and his type of prayer didn't have a name yet, but uh, the general idea, and, and he's documented oh, hundreds of thousands of his own cases, successful cases anyway, and, and the procedures that he knew at the time, um, he referred to it as, in general terms, not a scientific or affirmative prayer. He did consider it scientific because he did it clinically so many times and it was proven over time that it works. But basically, when he prayed over someone, he basically, in the, they were both in meditative state, himself and the person, they were face to face, sitting. And most of the people at the time that he worked with were Christian based. I mean, that's just what it was and where it was at the time. So he quoted a lot of scripture to establish a link, a unifying link with this patient or with his client. So right there, they, they believed, okay, they're, they're linked into something very, very powerful. It's God. And he was quoting either uh, from memory or from an actual Bible. But what he was also doing was getting them into slightly altered state. At the time, it was referred to as mesmerism. We call it self-hypnosis or uh, light meditative state. And in that state, regardless, whether you, you look at it clinically as, okay, Altered state means uh, any commands and any suggestions will go deeper. Um, if you look at it from a spiritual perspective, uh, as far as meditation is concerned, unifying with God, which is what meditation does, uh, as we've previously discussed, mystical meditation, higher consciousness meditation, if you will, or contact meditation, um, puts you one with God, therefore the highest power of healing, therefore the highest power of love and compassion, how can you not heal? So when you're linked in that way, either through self-hypnosis or meditation, um, then a healing starts to occur anyway. If you add words in and visuals and feelings as he did, then the healing becomes more complete and more effective. He didn't call it necessarily affirmative prayer at the time, but he did refer to it as uh, as best he could um, in interviews, and there were plenty of newspaper at the time, uh, newspaper interviews and lectures and demonstrations on stage, um, that the reason is the cure. And that stands out for me. And all, with all my the thesis and dissertations on scientific or affirmative prayer involving Quimby, that statement really stands out for me. The reason is the cure. Nowadays, in New Thought, um, or 
uh, science of mind or religious science, they say emotions, um, the, whatever particular emotion causes the illness, but it's still the same. And I love the way um, when he first established um, this form of prayer, he said the reason is the cure. And in, in his sessions with his patients and clients, it was cured. It, it was established. So, um, or, or the patient realized why they're not happy or why what, whatever it is is going on. I remember, uh, according to history, uh, the history of Quimby, he cured a woman and she went on to found um, Christian science, I believe it was, and, and all that Christian science has become with affirmative prayer, uh, which it was starting to be called at that point, uh, as its root, as its base. Um, unfortunately, most of those schools of new thought and religious science and science of mind, they don't necessarily say you have to meditate first in meditative or self-hypnotic state, then you do the affirmative prayer, because you must. Without that component, there's no power. It just becomes a saying, like, oh, life is good and I'm grateful, or um, healing has begun, I'm already healed, I feel good, I feel refreshed. You know, it, it, it has no power behind it. Meditation or self-hypnosis brings the power of the divine, the higher mind, higher consciousness into play, the, the highest energetic healing wisdom of love, if you will. And that activates it and makes the affirmation more powerful. So always remember, don't just do the affirmation, put the power of meditation behind it and self-hypnosis. In any case, um, Quimby um, cured or helped people to cure themselves a hundred thousand fold. It was so amazing. And this woman who couldn't walk could walk again. And she was so impressed. She would studied under him and established her own groups, which became Christian science. So I don't know if you can tell by these videos how excited I am in particular about this. Quickly backtrack. Um, just because Quimby and also Emerson, a philosopher named Emerson, is considered the father of new thought in addition to uh, Phineas Parker's Quimby, P.P. Quimby, um, what's exciting is it's nothing new. It seemed new at the time, hence they called it new thought. In, in Great Britain, they called it higher thought because it is, uh, in a way, higher with a capital H, if you will. But really, the basis, oh my goodness, if you go and trace, as I did and do all the research, back, trace new thought back, new thought practices, Buddhism, oh my goodness, all the different types of Buddhist healing practices, from Tibetan Buddhism to Zen Buddhism, all of that and more. Uh, not just the meditative aspect, but the healing parts, it at least goes back hundreds of thousands of years to Buddhism, Hinduism. Oh my goodness, any form of Far Eastern religion and beyond has is the basis for new thought. It, it just didn't become watered down like with New Age, but it's kind of got all mixed up and kind of spewed out into this great thing that people could, who were meant to at the time, understand it and utilize it. Very, very cool. So. What we're developing here in this series are individual tools for meditation, our individual tools for affirmative prayer, our individual tools for envisioning. And so you could take any one of these components and make them a great spiritual tool or technology to help yourself and to others. It just happens um, uh, this series of episodes of The Fourfold Path uh, concerns affirmative prayer or scientific prayer, as I like to call it. And as Ernest Holmes, the person who established religious science or the science of the mind, you should read that book. You'll be so inspired. It's a very, it's a thick tome. It's so cool. Um, in any case, he, I believe, was one of the first people to call it scientific prayer. Why? There are components, there's steps, and um, as with science, as in a lab, each one is proven and each one combined creates a result. And um, so that's why I like to call it scientific prayer. All my books, theses, dissertations, I call it scientific slash affirmative prayer. 
Another word for the spiritual technology is uh, spiritual mind science, or sorry, um, uh, meditational mind treatments, which I also like to call it. Um, when I when I do them um, uh, on a, uh, I guess, when clients come to see me and I've explored or we've explored all different avenues, we sit down face to face as Quimby did with his patients and we do a meditative mind treatment or mind treatment as I like to call it, which you'll learn right now because it's the same components and except instead of applying it to yourself sitting down and doing it to yourself you're doing it with the client or the patient very effective i've had people um, be healed and i know these are going to be outrageous claims um, take what i'm about to say with a grain of salt there's no legal implications i do not um, recommend using any of these technologies, spiritual technologies, instead of seeing your commercial doctor, your regular doctor, always seek the help of your physician first and then add these in as complementary medicine or alternative wellness. Never just use these. Um, certain branches of Christian science and other new thought schools and churches, they only use these and patients die. You need both. You need the science of medical science modern doctor tools plus these as an adjunct so this being said what are the components of scientific prayer check this out a whether you're doing it on yourself or with a patient or client get into meditative state get them into meditative state it's a lot easier if you're a clinical hypnotherapist you know what to say and do to get your patient or client into a slightly altered state or meditative state. If you're not, you're going to have to develop that yourself or read my books. I, I go into a lot of detail how to get your friend or your partner or whoever it is into slightly altered state. It's easy. We also covered this in our first few lessons of meditation. So we'll refer to it as meditative state as, refer, um, as opposed to um, a self-hypnotic state. You sit there, you get yourself in a slightly altered state. You sit there, you get your patient in a slightly altered state. Now what? I like to connect through the eyes. I believe the eyes are the windows to the soul or windows of the soul, whatever the expression is. I see a bright light that takes over, but that's just me. That's my years of experience. It's my reality. It doesn't necessarily mean it'll be your reality. But as a focal point from a clinical perspective, um, I find it good if a person connects with your eyes as a focal point. And then you can get them into altered state by talking them down and down and down. And then you could see they'll either close their eyes or keep staring at you. It doesn't matter in, in many cases. There's some variation to this depending on the visualizations I give them or you'll give them. You'll wing it. You'll know what to do. So you're talking to them, you're both breathing together, and you're getting them down into slightly altered meditative state, self-hypnotic state. And it is at this point where you establish the next point, the next component of scientific or affirmative prayer, which is unifying with God or unifying, if you don't like the word God, unifying with your higher mind, the divine, whatever it is. So as you're breathing, you begin to say to them, you begin to establish feeling. You're both feeling peace, love, joy, harmony, higher intelligence, wisdom, creativity. You bring in the emotions, the higher emotions, which are really God. And you get them to feel that. That's unifying and identifying with God, which is the next uh, couple of components to scientific prayer. So there they're in a slightly altered state. They're one with God at this point. Now, anything you're going to say or get them to say, if you want to get them to talk about uh, the experience that they're going to heal, um, that you can lead them. It's more the job of a clinical hypnotherapist. Here, we're just talking generally as something that will work for everybody. You don't have to be a professional to do this necessarily. Although I do have um, courses that will confirm you, that will establish you, that will document you, if you will, as a professional in this field. However, so 
they're feeling good, they're one with God. The next thing is the affirmation. And with the affirmation, all you do is the opposite. All you say is the opposite. Now, here's where there's deviation. A lot of clinical hypnotherapists, physicians, psychiatrists, therapists will say you have to know the exact traumatic incident, the exact thing, the exact reason why the person is the way they are now. Were they shot? Were they beat up? Were they robbed? Were they raped? Were they, um, di were they divorced? Were they abused? Whatever that reason was, if they blocked it out and you're not a clinical hypnotherapist, you don't have the tools to bring them back into that. Don't bother. It doesn't matter. Generally, if you approach it from a general perspective, and that's what I love about scientific or affirmative prayer, it'll be just as effective. So unifying, identifying with source while in meditative state, you bring in the affirmation and, or statement, if you will, and it's life affirming. It's the exact opposite of whatever they are and the energy is, it's already done. It's already done. So let's say, we'll take something simple. They've got a broken leg or a broken ankle. The wording would be something like, right here and right now, in this love energy of the divine and this higher power, we know, we affirm and we declare, our ankle is healed. Right here and right now, we feel it healed, whole and complete. That would be the statement. Or, for example, if it's, um, hmm, can't do rape, rape has been already. It has to be something tangible and physical that is fixed. Let's say it's a prayer for money. Let's say the person is having a little bit of problems um, uh, as far as finances are concerned. Right here and right now in the power of love and the power of the divine and the strength of love, compassion, we affirm and we declare right here and right now, prosperity is ours. Money is here. I have plentitude. I have more than enough and I am grateful. So you kind of get the feeling, you kind of get the idea. If they want love, love is here already. I am being, and then you add in the wording along with the emotions involved. So you get them really powerfully believing, really convicted in a conviction of it is already. So you brought their energy up in this power of it is already so. And then depending on your belief system with new thought metaphysics, often we say it is already so in the mind of the universe, in the mind of God. But the person may or may not relate to that. You can just say it is already so. But then you must bring in the next component, gratitude. Gratitude is almost the exact same energy as, as love in God, uh, peace, joy. So, the affirmative prayer statement, and then, I'm so grateful that it is already so. I'm so grateful that I already possess all the abilities to do this. I'm so grateful I already am rich. I'm so grateful I already have infinite love. The energy of gratitude, and you're starting to wrap up with releasing. So after all of this, all of these components, you're releasing the word. Because as Einstein said, everything moves in a circle. Everything is circular, cyclical, if you will. So whatever you put out, you can call it karma as well. Whatever goes out comes back in a great circle. So once you've done your affirmative statement with gratitude, you add and I release this word. We release the word knowing that a child can will return multiplied of itself, never void. It not only comes back, but it comes back multiplied. And you can add in whatever feels right, tenfold, a thousandfold, whatever feels powerful. So at that point, you've said the affirmative state, prayer statement, if you will, with gratitude and appreciation. You release the word. You let it be so. So it sits now in this next component it is already so, you let it be so, and the wind up, and so it is, or so mote it be. It's like a final stamp that it is. And how powerful is that? You leave the, the, the treatment, the prayer statement with, boom, this great stamp of so it is, so mote it be. And they're saying it with you. I would encourage them 
to say it with you as, as much as they can, as much as they're coherent or awake, if you will. If not, your energy will bring them up and it'll work, but I would also bring them in a little bit into this. Um, and, and that's it. Those are the basic components of scientific or affirmative prayer. Very powerful, very effective. Expand your consciousness and awareness with Dr. Michael's more than 40 paperback books of a self-help, mystical, new thought, and metaphysical nature available from Amazon. Um, if you want, you can follow up a treatment as I do. I Just before the statement, or rather just before the treatment, what I do is I do, um, it's kind of a neurological thing. They call it kinesiology. Um, and the, the basic thought behind that is when we're thinking untruth or a lie, we're weaker. Our body on all levels is weaker. When we're in the power of truth, nothing can stop us. We have this great strength. Like the people you, you've read and heard about that get strength and they lift the car off their child. Um, suppose a car has fallen on a child or whatever. So. Um, look up kinesiology, K-I-N-E-S-I-O-L-O-G-Y, I believe, kinesiology. And there should be some exercises there. I like to use this deal. So I'll get the person with their dominant hand, let's say it's the right hand, but we're using my left hand, to make a loop. I make a loop here. And um, just before the treatment, I get them to make a few statements that are true. And I try to pull, I try to break the loop. And I can't do it. And that proves to them, oh, okay. Then I get them to say a lie, like they're a woman or they're a man or a different name. And as soon as they lie, I can break the loop. Maybe they believe that, maybe they don't, but they see, oh, there's a difference. At the end of the treatment, I get them to do the same thing, but with what we try to reprogram them with, say uh, they didn't feel loved or say money. Uh, or a combination of both. So we do this, uh, what's your name, blah, 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 I can't break the loop, uh, what's your sex, can't break the loop, and then I, I get them to say a lie, you're a girl or you're a man, boom, uh, a few lies just to establish that, and then I bring in the statement for them to say, I'm rich, oh, I'm powerful, oh, I'm loved, I'm a girl, or I'm a boy, and then we do that again. I'm rich, I'm powerful. It works. Quimby, I don't believe, did this. I added that in um, because I believe it's a prover. It, it will prove that the, this treatment worked for your clients. We've come to the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll review it. I hope you'll go over it in conjunction with my book, The Fourfold Path. I hope this brings to light and to life the incredible subject of scientific or affirmative prayer. Until next time, thank you so much for joining me. Peace and richest blessings. Welcome to the Fourfold Path and Dr. Michael Leike's spiritual tools and technologies that will increase the quality of your life.